Hello and welcome. I call the channel The Jungle Nook and today we're going to be doing some winter up potting. Now I know a lot of you is when you hear that you're thinking well winter up potting that's a no-no. You don't want to do that. You can actually lose your plants by up potting in the winter. But there are certain situations where it is actually more harmful not to up pot in the winter and we'll get into all of that. What I'm trying to do in these videos is not only share how I'm caring for my plants and give some tips and tricks, but I'm also trying to explain the reasons why I do what I do. And I already put a lot of information in some of these other videos, so I would highly recommend, you know, checking out some of them. Especially if you're watching this video on winter up potting, I got a uh, a winter growing season video, a watering video, and a root rot video. All of those will really complement the information that you're going to get in this. So as far as uh, up potting in the winter or, or just taking care of your plants in the winter in general, we're taught that you know you should reduce the amount of watering and also not fertilize in the winter um, and that's because our plants grow much slower or go dormant in the winter well the first thing about the dormancy tropical plants they actually don't go dormant in the winter that's not part of their normal life cycle uh, yeah because of the reduced amount of hours of daylight available and uh, the cooler temperatures and stuff. Yeah, they'll grow a little slower, but they will still put out lots of nice new growth, providing you're meeting their requirements. Even though there are less hours of daylight available, if you're reducing the amount of water that you're giving the plant, allowing them to dry out a little too much in between waterings, they're not going to have the moisture that they need and that moisture is what absorbs the nutrients in the pot and the root sucks up that moisture that is rich in nutrients and it needs those things without the nutrients and moisture even though the plant will be in light it's not going to be able to adequately engage in photosynthesis and that is what will really slow the, uh, the new growth and the performance of your plant. By reducing the water a lot of times and you know, therefore the nutrients, we're actually creating drought-like conditions within the pot for the plant. And that's why our plants you know, can struggle so much in the winter. There's other factors too, temperature and humidity depending on where you live, you know, your temperature in the winter could get much cooler or where I live in the northeastern part of the United States, it gets very cold, well below freezing for several months. We can even get several feet of snow here. Um, and the humidity level will drop. But in our homes, even though our plants, you know, a lot of them are tropical, they will still continue to grow you know, at a slower rate, but they'll still grow and put out lots of new growth at a temperature of 68 degrees or above. You know, in the low 70s would be great, but that might be a little unrealistic for a lot of us. But 68 degrees um, and a constant steady humidity level with uh, adequate nutrients and water, our plants will be able to engage in photosynthesis just fine, even with those reduced hours. When we reduce the amount of water that we're given the plants, um, that is actually reducing the amount of humidity. If you allow them to overly dry out in between waterings, that can cause fluctuations. Our plants prefer a steady, constant supply of humidity at a, at a, a steady level. Uh, they prefer it to be between 50 and 60 percent, but even if you're like in the high 40s or, or even a little lower, as long as it's steady, the plant can adapt. 
Now, you know, for some plants like ferns, yeah, they're going to need a humidity in the 60s or above. But, you know, a temperature between 68 degrees into the low 70s in the winter, a steady humidity at least in the high 40s, your plants will do just fine. Now, you do have to be mindful that plants that are sitting on the floor, you know, the, the pot's in contact with the floor, and that could cause the pot and the root ball to be cooler. And that could mean that it does require uh, a little less or infrequent waterings because it will be cooler down there and there'll be less evaporation and the, the pots, you know, the, the root ball is colder, so it will grow a little slower and use a little less uh, water and nutrients. But it's the opposite for those plants that are possibly hanging from your ceilings or on a shelf where the temperature will be warmer because of the, uh, you know, the warm air rises. And that will cause those plants to grow quicker, use more water, but also increase the evaporation within the pots. So when you have a, a plant that you're seeing the tips of the leaves or even the whole leaf, turn brown and crispy that could be a sign that your plant is root bound and when a plant becomes root bound that's when you're going to want to up pot there are some varieties like monstera and pothos and stuff like that that don't mind being uh, root bound but you will probably have to start watering it a little more frequently when a plant becomes root bound uh, there's less soil within the pot and it's the soil that's holding the moisture and, uh, and the nutrients and stuff. So when there's less soil and more rut, you know, there's not as much moisture and nutrients available for the plant. Plus the roots can begin to coil around within the pot and actually begin to choke out other roots. It can strangle other roots. And what will happen when your plant becomes root bound is they're not able to get the, the, the moisture or the nutrients and they can actually start to starve. And uh, the plant may also start shutting off leaves that you're not sure why because they're, they're in the light, they're a younger, newer leaf. You don't understand why they're turning yellow and dropping off. Well, the plant could be trying to compensate by uh, dropping these leaves because it's not able to support so much foliage because of the, the lack of moisture and nutrients within the pot. So in the winter time, you know, some of our varieties, we may need or want to up pot them. Now, as far as uh, reducing the water because the plant doesn't need as much water and you don't want to uh, overly water the plant and cause root rot. Um, actually, now this is going to be, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Um, this might be a little surprising, but root rot is not caused by overwatering. Okay? Root rot is not caused by overwatering. Root rot is caused by the roots sitting in saturated soil. That is not because of overwatering. That is because of inadequate drainage. And when we start potting up some of these plants, you'll see what I do so that I do not have to worry about root rot even though I water my plants every day. Root rot is actually caused because there's so much water in the soil that there's not enough oxygen. You need well aerated soil for the roots to be healthy. If there's not enough oxygen within the soil for the roots and the water is, and it's just sitting in saturated soil, the roots will die and the roots will rot. That is not root rot. When you hear root rot, that's not root rot. Those are roots that have died and rotted. But root rot is when pathogens uh, actually begin to attack and feed 
uh, well, they don't attack. They feed on that rotted root. But once they get to a healthy spot of the root now, that's when they attack the root, they infect the plant, and that's when you get root rot. Root rot is not caused by overwatering. It's caused by inadequate drainage. And if you have adequate drainage, there is no reason to reduce the amount of watering that you do. When you're told to let your soil dry out in between waterings, they don't mean bone dry. Think of a sponge, submerge it in the water. When you take it out and you wring it out and you can't get no more water out of that sponge, but it's still moist, that's around the point where you want to add some more water to that soil. When you wring that sponge out and it's still moist, that is almost an inadequate amount of moisture for the roots to be able to absorb any moisture out of that soil. But it is moist enough to prevent the roots from drying out. And when it's at that level where the sponge is you know, still moist but you can't get no water out and that's what your soil's at, there is plenty of aeration in that soil. Now to pot these up, this is mostly coco core. It's a potting mix. Always use a potting mix that is made of uh, coco core or peat moss. Never a topsoil. Uh, topsoil will compact over time. It will hold too much moisture. It won't drain. Um, that's fine outdoors in your raised beds, in your flower gardens, your vegetable gardens. But in pots, in containers, always try to use... Uh, a peat moss or cocoa core potting mix. And what I do is I will add some, uh, some perlite. The perlite is what gives me the excellent drainage and uh, assists in the aeration. So there's plenty of oxygen for the, uh, for the roots. This is what it is. It's just perlite. And then I will also put in some orchid potting mix, which is basically just bark, it's tree bark. And the tree bark is great because this will break down real slow in the pot over time and provide compost or nutrients to the plant. And that also will uh, assist in the aeration as well. Now, the pots that I'm going to be using, they will also drain as well. Uh, there's lots of, uh, lots of little holes and stuff down in here. When the soil drains, it will be able to drain out into this little tray down here. And, uh, you know, all the water will drain out and away from the roots. Drainage for the soil and the pot is just as important as adding the perlite to the uh, to the soil for drainage you got to do all of this 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 is so important when you first start uh, potting up your plants you know you don't you don't want to mess up on this step right here here's another pot it's got a hole in it too and uh, it will drain out as well so what I do is I will usually fill the pot up about a third of the way with some uh, peat moss or cocoa core. And this already has a little bit of perlite and some slow release fertilizer in it, which will be fine for over the winter. And I'll fill that up about a third of the way. And then I'll, I'll also add almost an equal part of the perlite, which is going to seem like a lot. But again, I water my plants every day and uh, I need excellent drainage in my pots. I don't water them heavily every day. I, uh, I give them a light water almost every day. And it doesn't even come out of the bottom of the pot, but about once a week or so, I will water it enough to where I do see the, uh, the water coming out of the bottom. And then I'll skip a couple of days of watering to make sure there's not too much in there. But my, my pots do drain quite well. 
give it a good mix. And you're going to notice that this pot is going to seem quite large for the plant that I'm going to be putting in here. And I do that because I do not like up potting. Uh, I don't like the extra maintenance, but I also don't like the uh, running the possibility of shocking the plant in between up pottings. If I, I know it's recommended just to go up an inch or two in the pot size, but if you do that, in my opinion, the roots are just going to fill that in really rapidly and you're going to need to up pot it again. This is pretty much the forever pot <laughs> for this plant. I shouldn't have to up pot this for years. And that's part of the reason why I put the, uh, the bark in here because that will take a long time to break down. And then, you know, every spring and fall, I'll put a slow release fertilizer in there. This is what I'll put in there every spring and, uh, and fall. It's just a, uh, a pelletized or granular fertilizer that every time you water it, it, you know, it dissolves a little bit and releases some 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 nutrients into there. And that's all they'll get over the winter. In the springs when I'll, I'll do a little bit of extra uh, fertilization with like a miracle Grow liquid fertilizer. And what I do is I'll get like a, something that's a 10, 10, 10 strength and I'll dilute that down so that it's a five, five, five. I'll add twice as much water or half the amount of fertilizer to the amount of water so that it's a five, five, five. Now, I'm not even, I don't even remember what this plant is right here, but you're going to, it's been in this for a long time. Now, because this is a winter up potting, I'm going to be as gentle as I can with these roots. As you can see, it is starting to become root bound. I am going to loosen, try and loosen them up a little bit, but I really don't want to damage or break them which let's see well i guess i did a little bit just loosen it up a little bit for winter up potting you want to try not to disturb the roots too much and this wasn't root bound too bad so There we go. I'm just going to set that right on top. Now, after I put that drainage layer in, which is of the, you know, the, uh, a lot of that perlite, I just top dress it with the, uh, the pure potting mix because perlite will float and I don't like how that looks. This is just personal preference. And you could still use the same mixture all the way through the pot if you want. And yeah, this, as you see, this is a large pot for this plant but I'm not going to have to repot it for quite a long time. And there is plenty of room for those roots to grow and, and spread. Now, when I up pot a plant, I do not add any additional uh, fertilizers, even if it was spring. And the reason for that is you want the roots to start to grow and search for the nutrients so that the roots start to grow and fill in this pot. By using such a large pot, the roots really, you know, they're, they're, they're right. They're, they're not, it's going to take a while for those roots to grow out. So because I have so much perlite in here, I'm not worried about over, over watering and having the water be saturated. As you can see, this is a little more rough bound than the other one. But I'm not even going to loosen those roots up at all. I'm just going to put it in the soil, give it the top dressing. No additional fertilizers because this already has slow release fertilizer in it.
And then I'm just gonna make sure I hydrate this really well. Peat moss and cocoa core take a lot to initially hydrate it, as well as to rehydrate it if it dries out too much. If you ever uh, see your pots and the soil really dries out and you have a space between the pot and the soil, you're gonna wanna do quite a few small frequent waterings to really get it to hydrate. Otherwise the water will just run in between the soil and the pot and you're not actually, you're not actually hydrating the soil and giving the plant what it needs. All right, I hope this was helpful and there will be more, more videos to come. Thanks for watching.